Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, now we will have uh, another interpretation of sustainability from our colleagues from the Ukraine. Uh, let me go back to the early 2022. Uh, all of us had some plans, uh, some projects to realize some festivals, and uh, we suddenly were shocked by, by what happened the war uh, at our neighbors, which we cannot remain indifferent. And uh, lots of images of destroyed apartments with destroyed pianos that remind um, as a memento of yesterday's life, sheets of music flying through the streets, philharmonics and opera houses um, as uh, temporary homes. But in the same time, in these daily reports from the Ukraine, we also saw musicians and we heard uh, music all the time, sounds that resounds regardless of uh, cruelty. Artists playing um, in the subway stations for children to sleep and concerts organized against the war, muses that never stops. I remember words uh, by my close colleague, Roman Revakovic, um, conductor and uh, organizer of musical life in Poland, promoter of Ukrainian music in Poland and uh, vice versa. He asked uh, what we, as an EMC, could do to help the Ukraine, answered, to tell people as many stories as you can about the Ukraine itself and Ukrainian culture. So now we have this unique opportunity uh, to listen to the stories by our colleagues, professionals, experts from the Ukraine, from uh, different sectors. I mean, uh, uh, governmental, NGOs, civil society, business, music business also. So, thank you very much uh, for your participation in this panel of uh, the EFM. Thank you that you are with us uh, in person. And please tell us your stories. Maybe first, Mariana, please. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a big, big pleasure and honor for all of us to be here uh, today. And thank you so much for a very, very warm uh, welcome for EMC community. It's a really big pleasure to be here, really officially for the first time. And I'm uh, really uh, happy that in the nearest future we will be also a member of EMC. Um, so it's coming in the next chapter, but very, very close. Um, thank you very much, Joanna, for your introduction. And um, so, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. I work for Ukrainian Institute, which is a governmental um, institution. We are a structure of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, and our aim is to promote Ukrainian culture abroad, uh, to provide this intercultural dialogue between Ukraine and other cult uh, countries of the world. Um, so, together with Alona, we actually prepared um, um, presentation. Um, so, uh, actually, it's more than one year that we are living in the wartime, and of course, uh, it's uh, challenging, uh, it's uh, bomb shellings, um, big danger of uh, its um, as, as usually we have to improvise, you know, like all the jazz musicians and like all Ukrainian people, uh, it's a normal state for all of us, so. Uh, right, and um, despite of all the uh, atrocities of the war and also ecological catastrophes, and I really have to mention 
this uh, that happened actually a couple of days ago in uh, Kachovka, hydro uh, power plant, and now we are facing really a very big, and I, I, I believe it's uh, one of the biggest disasters um, since for, for the recent decades. So the whole uh, southern regions of Ukraine are now underwater. Um, so it's now uh, another big problem that we are facing and uh, rescuing people, rescuing our harvests and uh, actually also our agriculture uh, that was to, to help African countries uh, in these crucial times is also in danger. So um, despite of that, we're still trying to be sustainable. And uh, so, uh, you know, after the presentation of Matt Brennan, we were thinking, wow, what afterwards we, we can present, because it's um, really a very challenging uh, situation that we have now, and it's for us uh, nowadays a bit uh, utopia, uh, but still we have our interpretation of sustainability that we could present to you. So, uh, first of all, I would uh, point out some uh, important factors of sustaining music in Ukraine. So, first of all, it's our resilience and high adaptiveness to the difficult situation uh, that is rapidly changing. Uh, and it's converting bomb shelters and railway stations and subways into the concert venues. Uh, it's uh, survival uh, in winter without electricity, uh, organizing uh, um, concerts in candlelights further on with generators, but we still did it. Um, organizing still concerts uh, because we actually, uh, most of our concert venues, Philharmonic Halls, uh, reopened uh, end of April last year, as soon as uh, Kyiv region was uh, deoccupied, uh, and providing programs for the people because there is a high demand on music. And to be frank, we don't have this problem as many European uh, concert venues face nowadays with the lack of audience. I'm sorry, but our concert halls are really full. We have sold outs, so you're more than welcome to organize any of your concerts here in Ukraine. It will be definitely a big success. Uh, right, and of course, uh, new foundations and crowdfunding uh, that support musicians uh, who are now uh, on the front line, as well as those who lost their jobs, their homes, uh, are now emerging, and we are working hard on helping them all as well. Another important factor, uh, which is now very visible, and is also visible during the uh, recent time we had as we uh, went through our two revolutions, COVID times, it's our uh, private initiatives and NGOs. And here I would uh, really want to uh, invite you to cooperate with them as much as you can, don't hesitate to do it because, uh, of course, you have another uh, vision of cooperation because you always address first institutions. In Ukraine, it works a little bit in a different way because our institutional system is still emerging and we're still working on building new unions, new partnerships inside of our music sector. So, please, you're more than welcome to cooperate with the NGOs. I'm uh, very happy that some of the representatives of the NGOs are also here presented. Uh, and what is happening now in music and culture? So we are now actually in the process of reinventing identity and coming back to our roots in music and other arts. Uh, one of the shining examples of that is uh, the um, performance of Jamala, the um, winner of Eurovision Song Contest uh, in Liverpool uh, together with the orchestra of BBC and she presented her new album Kirim which is dedicated to Crimean um, 
mu uh, music and tra its traditional music in new uh, interpretations. So, so many programs like this um, are being created recently and people really valued that much so for it's actually I believe the third wave we are uh, having because the first wave was under we gained our independence in the 90s then another step was after Maidan that we realized that we really have to keep our traditions and nowadays we realize that we, we should do it in, and it doesn't matter what, how much does it cost, because uh, our culture is now in danger. There are so many musicians who died. There are so many uh, uh, artists who were uh, totally cancelled, so to speak, physically by uh, Russian army, just because they didn't want to cooperate with the current um, governments in the occupied territories. So it, unfortunately, the history comes back from the Soviet times. And of course, all the countries from the ex, uh, the ex Soviet countries know that for sure we have a common trauma on, on this issue. But nowadays, unfortunately, we are facing that as well. Um, we are uh, reflecting on the current situation also in the music. Um, the sounds of the war are used in the new pieces and new programs. For example, Pocas Trio from Odessa used uh, the sounds of sirens in their programs. Um, there was another uh, big program, uh, program of uh, music under siege uh, by Chernihiv musicians who used the sounds of the war in Chernihiv city, uh, which is in the northern part of Ukraine, and the uh, Russian soldiers uh, came very close to it. So they um, actually uh, recorded the sounds of the war. They, they were surrounded and created new programs using that. Moreover, um, it's a very intriguing project, uh, and we will, uh, I hope it will be premiered in Edinburgh uh, this year. Uh, a piece of a rocket will be part of a musical performance. Moreover, it will be turned into music instrument. Uh, Roman Grigoriev, our um, composer of a younger generation, contemporary um, art musician, uh, composed a piece for the orchestra and a rocket. So, for actually, to be frank, for Ukrainian Institute, the biggest challenge nowadays is to uh, transport this rocket to the UK. But I hope we will, we will manage it as well. Uh, right. Also, new initiatives and unions are being created, uh, which is a demand of current situation, of course. And I'm especially happy to um, announce the new uh, Institute uh, of Improvisational Music, who, was, uh, who is now based in Lviv and unites musicians from various regions of Ukraine. Uh, so um, you are more than welcome also to contact them for your cooperation. Uh, and uh, as the war broke up, uh, the Western cities, especially Lviv, has become a hub for many artists, especially musicians. So they came from the front lines, from the um, cities who were struggling the most from the bomb shellings, especially from Kharkiv, from Odessa, from Dnipro, from Mariupol, Kherson, and many other cities. And um, Jazz Bass Festivals, together with the American House, initiated a new prog uh, program uh, which was called Jazz Relocated. And they initiated the um, new, pro totally new programs that uh, appeared thanks to these new collaborations between the artists. And I hope this program will be uh, lasting over and over and engage uh, the more um, musicians, uh, as, more, uh, as many musicians as possible. Uh, I'm also happy to talk about emerging new festivals in Ukraine and beyond. Uh, about the uh, festivals outside of Ukraine, I will be happy that uh, Olga will tell you more because she's the one brave woman who managed to organize totally new festival uh, outside of Ukraine, engaging the collaborations of Ukrainian and international artists. 
uh, but Ola definitely will tell you much more. Uh, in Kharkiv, which is really uh, like 20 kilometers away from Russian border, uh, they totally had to um, reinvent their music industry and um, music venues, but still they managed to organize a new festival uh, last year, Kharkiv uh, Frontier Jazz Fest. In Chernihiv, I mentioned before, the, uh, this year they will have Chernihiv Summer Jazz Festival. Uh, so new concert venues also uh, emerge in, in Ukraine. For example, Yermilov Center, which was uh, previously known as Contemporary Art Center and is based basically in the basement of uh, Kharkiv University, now hosts a lot of uh, music events and uh, nowadays it's really one of the safest places uh, for, for these um, events. There are also new um, uh, concert venues like Odnodunci in Kiev, Naposti in Ternopil, and I also happy to announce uh, in, um, Fruits in Kiev, and Dima is one, the one who is behind it, and maybe also tell you some more uh, about about this venue. So it's it's just very briefly uh, about what's happening in Ukraine. And um, I also want to uh, concentrate a little bit uh, on the cultural diplomacy in the wartime, on the example of our institution, how we face uh, uh, this situation and how we really try to do it as much sustainable as possible. Uh, so one, uh, the first uh, important issue is bringing awareness of Ukrainian current situation. Uh, it's um, a very important cooperation and, um, with Europe Just Network. I'm very happy about that. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you to all of your team because you really moved the mountains and uh, through this collaboration we managed to uh, publish the list of musicians who left Ukraine because of the war and uh, structured it uh, according to the countries, thus uh, to make it uh, also accessible to international audience and international organizers, uh, festival directors and engage them into their programs. Uh, we also initiated a number of uh, projects um, uh, to talk about the war but also to talk about the state of culture during the war. One of the uh, pro first projects we initiated was called uh, Postcards from Ukraine, when we gathered um, pieces of architecture that were ruined through the war, and um, we showed how, how they look nowadays. Uh, culture Fights Back is also one of our projects where, when we talk stories about artists who are at the front line nowadays and who gave up their music instruments and went uh, to the war. But before that, we also last summer initiated the special project about the jazz man at the war and uh, chose really the most prominent, the most outstanding ones uh, who really need their visibility, and thus we showed their uh, photos on the stage, and now uh, with the weapons in their hands, tell the stories and gave the QR codes on their music. Uh, actually, just a month ago, in April, this uh, exhibition was here uh, in, in the House of Music in the frame of Budapest Ritmo. Many thanks for this cooperation. But we premiered it also at Womax, at Jazz Ahead, in Warsaw, um, and in Sweden, and now it is in the Netherlands. So if there are any partners from the Netherlands, you're also welcome to use it at your venues. We will be more than happy about that. It's another special issue is implementing cultural programs as a soft power in solving the conflicts. So one of our long-lasting uh, lasting programs is Extra Sound. Uh, it's the program of participants of Ukrainian musicians at key uh, music events and showcases. Uh, we work with Womax, Jazz Ahead, Wave Siena, Rapper One, CO Pop, and other uh, showcases. In Last year, it was a real breakthrough as we had first official presentations uh, of Ukraine at Womax and at Jazz Ahead with our stands, delegations, uh, participants at the conferences and musicians at the showcases. Um, 
we gather also lists of um, proposals from Ukrainian music industry and um, share them uh, in our newsletters with the international audience. Um, and of course, we are, not, last but not least, but very important issue is for us the climate change. So for sustainability in that, I believe Ukraine is the best partner for you as we have no flights operated in Ukraine. It means that all of your participants, even if they want to fly, Unfortunately, they won't be able to do it. So uh, now, together with e Europe Jazz Network, we are working on the program of green tours and engaging Ukrainian festival directors uh, and uh, organizers of the concerts to join the program and to engage as many international musicians for their green tours as possible. Uh, we are also working on a very important issue, which is integration of Ukraine to international discourse. Uh, because as we saw, there is so uh, few of information on Ukraine uh, about that. And now we are working hard to, to change this situation. I'm also, again, uh, mentioning Europe Jazz Network because of the Jazz Panorama project. And we... Um, published the uh, online jazz guide on Ukraine. Uh, so I'm really happy that Ukraine is, is already on the online jazz map of Europe. And it's also very important for, also for our Ukrainian jazz community to be presented. Uh, we are working on decolonial studies and gathering materials for translation or, uh, and pr publishing them for international archives, uh, libraries, and so on and so forth, working with conferences, also like uh, European Music Forum. Thank you for that. Uh, and we are also medium between Ukrainian artists and institutions and international community. So we are also like informational point for you. Uh, we, are, we can provide you with any information you would need to cooperate with Ukrainian artists and um, institutions. Just to last. <laughs> Sorry for being so long. Uh, we are creating a platform for Ukrainian culture internationally through focus programs at the festivals, participants of Ukrainian artists at key international events. And uh, uh, here is also a very important factor with uh, collaboration with you, because thank you so much for your support, for your openness, because uh, there are so many uh, programs and projects that appeared since two, uh, 2000. Uh, 22, the 24th of February, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you for a uh, special um, issue on Ukraine that you're devoting your uh, festivals to, and I'm uh, happy to talk just only about one um, shining example that we had in, Sto in Stockholm dur during the uh, International Stockholm Women's Just Festival, because the festival devoted the whole program to Ukraine. And then the local partner um, managed to organize for them 11 concerts in five cities. So it was a magnificent tour and it is a perfect case also for you that you can use and also implement in your countries at your venues. So we are really very open for cooperation and it was really a very great uh, exchange between musicians, between the venues and uh, and the fact I had so many positive feedbacks from the organizers that they literally got the cultural shock of uh, Ukrainian musicians and they want really to do more and more. So I believe that it will happen in the, in the, even in the autumn uh, this year because we have already big plans for that. Uh, and we are creating possibilities for capacity building of Ukrainian music industry which, uh, in the representatives, which is also essential topic for our uh, representatives to be heard and also to exchange um, their ideas and maybe to plan something together with other representatives and build new partnerships. So I am ending it, but uh, we are really open to cooperation. Thank you so much for your support, for, uh, for your understanding. And um, it's, it's really very important for Ukrainian community to be heard 
and thank you for, the, for creating this platform for us to have a word. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mariana. That was really impressive, how brave they are. Mm. And uh, I understand that you use also some sentences from the presentation by Lesia Olinik, a very special person, legendary um, secretary general of National Committee of Ukraine in the International Music Council. So thank you very much. It was about uh, music in Ukraine. Now let's say a few words about uh, music export Ukraine. Alona Dmuchowska. Um, thank you so much for the invitation. I will try to be very brief because Mariana has already done a great overview of the situation what we have at the moment in Ukraine. Uh, and our work is more focused on the international cooperation. So we are Music Export Ukraine, an independent initiative which helps Ukrainian artists to build international career. And actually, we don't really have like a government-funded uh, export office like in all your countries probably. Uh, and we, uh, if we don't have uh, something, we would like to create it by ourselves. This is how Ukraine operates and this is why we have this courage to go ahead and make things happen. Uh, so, um, we have a, a couple of vectors, let's say, how we work. Um, and the first and very important one is uh, educational projects, because actually export starts from the inside. We need to build the background for uh, Ukrainian artists and managers to know how to operate on the international level, and actually how to use all of these uh, ideas and opportunities which exist over there. Uh, for instance, one of the highlights which we have at the moment is uh, a project called Eastern European Music Academy and we are doing that with the support of Creative Europe program. Um, we have uh, an educational hybrid project for 12 um, Eastern European countries. So actually we have students from um, part of the continent and our idea and our goal is not only to give them first-hand experience of working on the European level, to have those uh, perfect lecturers who might connect them to the uh, wider business European music community, but also to work with each other because this is where the, the great uh, chemistry might be created and this is where the mutual uh, work um, is starting just to be around all the students from different countries of this, this great community who can share and learn a lot from each other and this is actually like a very important component to start building the human connections first in order to build a sustainable industry, let's say, which we um, dream of. Uh, also, we are cooperating with the Ukrainian Institute a lot um, in the fields of popular music, because we work with different types and different genres of music. It can be electronic music, metal, pop music, anything you can dream um, and think of. And obviously, Great partners of ours are all those international events who are eager and open to host Ukrainian component. We're super open to make it happen and please contact us if you have any ideas or any challenges or possibly you uh, don't know where to start in order to bring Ukrainian component for your event. We would be super happy to brainstorm together with you and actually to think of the concept um, what type of Ukrainian talents might be uh, present at your event. Uh, as Mariana just said, we had a very first Ukrainian delegation together with the uh, Ukrainian Institute in Germany at Siopop, for instance, and they had the opportunity to meet German music industry. We had a great uh, Ukrainian presentation at Eurosonic, which is one of the most powerful, uh, powerful and needed music events on the continent. Um, we are talking to Ripperban Festival, so most probably we will see you uh, in September in Hamburg and so forth and so on. Uh, so we are super happy to be your contact point uh, in terms of Ukrainian music um, and actually uh, your connection of making it happen. I'm, I'm just like finding the slides so I can give you some um, understanding the situation what we have at the moment and actually the, the challenges we, we have, but also talk about the solutions right after. Um, so as Mariana said, um, concerts and tours are happening in Ukraine because 
For some of the people, unfortunately, we understand that tomorrow might never come. Uh, so the approach of Ukrainians is to live now and here and create the best events and the best experience for ourselves right now, just to enjoy and celebrate life. Um, and most of the events in Ukraine, but also outside of Ukraine, when you see our artists playing, it is for charity. Because this is our opportunity to have this communal experience to unite for something good, but also to um, fundraise some money to um, to help uh, humanitarian needs or to help even like to, to Ukrainian artists actually to buy the protective gear because they're in the army or they are at the like back front and helping um, to support our country. Um, so if you have the opportunity to um, host Ukrainian events or attend Ukrainian event, please do so because you are helping a um, much bigger uh, goal. Um, concerts and tours outside of Ukraine are kind of like challenge at the moment because, um, as you might have heard, male population um, is not uh, freely is not able to freely travel abroad. Uh, before uh, going abroad, Ukrainian um, artists uh, they need to apply to Minister of Culture to get the special permission and like collect all these uh, documents um, that they they are doing the charity tour, for instance, and they need to come back to Ukraine uh, in a particular amount of days. Uh, it is still possible. We still encourage you to contact us for the details or any type of help. Obviously, we are not uh, uh, decision makers of that process, but we know what type of documents needed to be collected. But also, we see it as the opportunity for female uh, bands and artists from Ukraine to fulfill all this uh, European quota. So please have a look at the great Ukrainian ladies uh, um, who are playing great uh, music all over the place, so it is highly recommended to invite them as well. And online activities are very much needed and appreciated. So actually, everybody uh, among the Ukrainian artists who are staying in Ukraine, for instance, they are engaged into different type uh, of activities. And just like a very nice um, example from our um, experience is that last year, we have done this great um, exchange project, um, again, with the help of European uh, Music Council through this Music Air uh, support scheme and we had 25 collaborations of Ukrainian musicians and European colleagues. So actually they could play a concert together, they could uh, write a song together, they could do a video together, it was like also a musical and visual collaboration and so on and so forth. Um, and it was the most challenging experience for ourselves uh, at that moment um, because it was September, October, November last year and as you have my heard, um, exactly in that moment we had great um, uh, Russian attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure. So actually, people were staying without electricity, without like connection. Internet was not working because there is no electricity. And still, um, we've managed to have this like 25 collaborations um, uh, and like Rolling Stones from Germany was writing about us, like the best music media on the continent. They cherished the quality of the con uh, the quality of music uh, that our artists uh, produced. Uh, we were included in seven um, different playlists by Spotify, premiered the song in seven different countries. Um, Ukrainian female um, collaboration with the Lithuanian colleagues was um, included into the very special uh, female power uh, compilation by the UK uh, journalists and so on and so forth. Uh, to sum up, the resilience is there and um, actually Ukraine will um, teach the whole Europe the flexibility and actually how to find the creative ways of doing things. We are very open to that and if you need any risk manager for your team, please engage Ukrainians. We know how to handle that. Uh, so I really hope to see um, all of you um, or possibly you might be doing some events. So please think of the Ukrainian component and contact us, we might brainstorm together of uh, how to do it in the best way. Thank you very much, Alona. <clears throat> Thank you for the invitation. 
and uh, you are great in it. <laughs> so uh, that was that 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 were uh, biggest projects. Uh, let's now talk about smaller one, but also very important, more local one. Uh, Olga Beckenstein with us. Uh, she is a festival curator, independent, and also artistic director of uh, MI Jazz Festival. Please. Uh, hello, and uh, thank you for invitation. It's an honor to be here and to uh, be able to have this conversation. Uh, I will be brief, and I don't want to repeat my colleagues, obviously. Uh, I just want to uh, highlight that all this, uh, our experience that we have, uh, good one, I mean, uh, everything that we uh, were able to, uh, to do and also why we are able to have this conversation right now it's because of the armed forces of Ukraine who are protecting us and you as well. So glory to heroes and heroines. And uh, while our soldiers are fighting to get back our temporary occupied territory in Ukraine, we are fighting to get back our temporary occupied cultural space and to get back our voices, our stories, and to uh, our heritage as well. Um, I'm going to talk about two festivals that um, I did during the last year. And one festival that I didn't do, but I attended, and it uh, was a festival made by my creative family in Kiev. So the first one festival that Mariana already mentioned, it's a brand new festival, Svetanak that is a um, uh, festival that is um, traveling festival. So each edition uh, is supposed to happen in a different country. And we already had the first edition in Norway. It was in November in Oslo and also in Bergen. We had a um, um, delegation of Ukrainian musician, male and female from Ukraine, uh, who was able to come across and to participate. And also we had musicians from Oslo and Bergen. And uh, it was uh, uh, aesthetically wise mostly. Um, it was acoustic uh, um, improvised music and it was electronic uh, new music, experimental music. And um, the very important part of this festival, the program of this festival is have one uh, one project, at least one project of the program, is pure co collaboration between artists from Ukraine and artists from that country that is um, happening in this festival. Um, the another festival um, is a collaboration with San Jose uh, Jazz Festival in uh, California in uh, USA. And it was uh, pure uh, co uh, it was pure international collaboration and also it was multidisciplinary project. We had not only concert, we also had a um, film program, dance performances, and we had an art exhibition and talks. And also we had um, uh, an official event in the city hall of San Jose uh, to unite community and to talk more about the case. Uh, through all those media that we represented at this festival, we wanted to show the intimate stories, our dream, our hopes, and to represent Ukraine not only as brave uh, fighters and soldiers, but uh, our culture and what are we fighting for. And here is a picture from the exhibition that was during the festival. It's um, works but by uh, Lesa Khamenka, and uh, she um, portray these uh, soldiers who represent all this culture that we are um, presenting. And uh, um, as part of the music program, it was five commissions between Ukrainian and local artists. And um, for example, one of those projects was um, uh, so uh, American uh, composer and uh, um, John Hollenbeck, he did an arrangement of Ukrainian folk music. 
and uh, they performed with uh, Highlight uh, um, High School Orchestra, and he also did workshops, and those students had to do arrangement of Ukrainian music and to learn it in this way. In the same time, Ukrainian artists did some arrangements of American music, and also because San Jose uh, has um, big uh, community of uh, Vietnam, big Vietnamese community, we also had a uh, collaboration between uh, our multi-instrumentalist artist uh, Alessis Darovetska and uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese American artist uh, Vanessa Van Vo, and so on and so on. So it was a really beautiful collaboration and uh, yeah. Uh, and um, both these festivals uh, highlight the, uh, the importance of collaboration on the most horizontal level between artists, because I believe that it is the most sustainable collaborations. But one, uh, because while institutional collaborations often depends on uh, funding, if artist wants to create some project together, they will do it anyway. And um, the another festival that was so uh, previous two festivals was uh, had perfect. Gender um, balanced, uh, uh, gender balanced. Uh, the festival in Kiev <laughs> was um, not that much because lots of female artists uh, go abroad, so we had um, mostly male artists. But we also, so, uh, it is a Strichka festival, it's one of the most uh, famous festivals in Ukraine for not only for Ukrainians but also for. Uh, international party goers because of the festival of, uh, con of uh, electronic music, dance music. And uh, uh, usually it has huge uh, lineup of international artists. This time we didn't have huge lineup, uh, but we had still four artists uh, who came to Ukraine and one of them was even from the US. So imagine how long uh, he, um, his traveling was but all of them were super happy to come to feel this energy and to bring some uh, new music to Ukrainian community who s stays in Ukraine. And yeah, it was, and the important part also of this festival was that no matter how, so first of all, it's a dance uh, festival that used to be at the night time, obviously, and right now we have a curfew and it's only, uh, this festival ha happened only during the day. Uh, and even though it gives some uh, feeling that everything is okay, that war is not happening, uh, because everyone is happy and dancing and yeah, and just enjoy life and time, but in the same time, everyone is participating in some way. And you could meet some queer person who will give you cards with some QR code for donation. Or you can, could meet some friend who just come back from the army to have a rest at this festival. Uh, and uh, the last, what I wanted to say, um, for many of us, uh, I'm sure music exists not only for the art's sake, and um, as you also know, a few days ago, uh, in the day when UN decided to celebrate Russian Language Day, Russia blew up a um, dam in Kherson region that caused uh, not only immediate damage for lots of uh, human and animals and land, but also brought uh, huge um, colossal global consequences that we don't know yet what's going to happen. And uh, music is the way how we can talk about it as well, how we can bring attention to such cases. So if you want to talk about it, <laughs> you can have this collaboration and conversation first. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Olga. It's very moving what you're telling us. And uh, our uh, last uh, panelist, 
uh, Dmitro Savkiv, Dima, uh, you will tell us your fantastic story about uh, internet <coughs> radio and art gallery, which you managed to combine in the jazz club in Kiev. Please do it. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dmitry Savkiev and I am a manager of 32 Jazz Club in Kiev, Ukraine. And uh, to start with, I'm really, really grateful for the organizers of this beautiful event, uh, for an opportunity to legally travel from Ukraine, because as you might know, uh, the conscript age males are not allowed to legally leave the country. Uh, for maybe exceptions like this one, so I'm grateful for this and for an opportunity to sleep without sirens for at least what a couple of days. So it's another um, very nice um, achievement. Uh, so today I would like to talk about more micro-level management of uh, music sustainability in Ukraine, in Kiev especially, as our jazz club has been operating for six years by now and these operations were brutally interrupted by war 16 months ago as you all probably know and uh, yeah today i want to talk about how we managed to sustain how we how we managed to survive through the 16 months of invasion so we open um, december 2017 uh, we have emerged from um, a modern art gallery was vision cards house which was another interesting cultural concept for Kiev, quite unique, but it's a completely different story. I would like to focus on musical for it today. Uh, so throughout our um, operations, we have hosted numerous uh, jazz festivals. We have participated in uh, International Jazz Bass Festival, which was an excellent experience for us. Uh, we have pioneered uh, this uh, concept of um, international jazz festival for international festival in uh, smaller uh, towns and cities around Ukraine, like Berdichev, and especially I want to highlight Mariupol, uh, which was brutally raised uh, from the face of the earth by the Russian army. And uh, as far as I can remember, we had, you know, fully packed, um, concert hall there, which is, you know, brings tears to the eyes because some of them are not existent at the time. Uh, so we have hosted a number of local uh, festivals. Uh, we have managed to grow uh, quite a bit. We have attracted some you know, famous musicians. You can see some of the names uh, on the board. Uh, so we have even survived the pandemic, which was quite challenging for us because um, it is difficult to travel around Europe, but it was like the further you go from the center of Europe, the further you go from you know, the bigger, more developed countries, it's, it becomes more and more difficult. But we have managed to overcome that. And uh, yeah, we were, before the war, we were looking uh, into the future with a certain uh, fair share of optimism. Uh, however, on um, 24th of February, uh, we woke up to the sounds of explosions. Uh, we have organized our last pre-war concert on Wednesday, 23rd of February, um, and just a couple of hours later after the end of the concert, uh, we woke up to get to know that the war has started. On this picture, uh, you can see uh, some of the people affiliated with our jazz club. You can see our jazz mobile. Um, this picture uh, is taken in the Kiev region during the occupation, as some of us, uh, if not most of us, have participated uh, working on the defense of our city, of our land. And uh, we have been doing it for this 16 months and uh, by supporting charity organizations, uh, by providing different kind of uh, charity programs and all kind of that things. Um, we became one of the few and first institutions, or musical institutions in Kiev to go back to operations just 10 days after the Kiev region was liberated from the Russian army. Um, it, as you can imagine, it was quite challenging as there was no certainty, same as there is now. No one knew what was going to happen tomorrow, uh, how the things are going to unfold. And uh, throughout all of this time, uh, as you might know, Kiev was bombed. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but we were relieved and work in uh, constant danger. And however, 
we managed to sustain uh, music even in these uh, conditions. Uh, we're always sure we're going to continue operating no matter what um, we have always believed in our country, in our fellow musicians, and uh, we were a part of the economy, same as any other business. So we've all been working, we've all been doing our part in order to ensure the sustaining of Ukrainian culture and music, and uh, I'm especially grateful to people who are present here with me, to Mariana, to Leona, to Olga, who've been doing their fair share, and they've been doing that perfectly, and actually, thankfully, to people like them, our musical industry is able to survive throughout the war. Um, well, uh, as you again, as you might know, uh, we have experienced at least four months of constant blackouts, and. Uh, Electricity shortages due to the, the bombings uh, of our uh, electricity power plants and uh, so on. But in the darkest of hours, we continue to gather audience uh, for concerts. And I think it means we've been doing something, uh, something right. We've been doing something we um, had to do. For a lot of people in Kiev, it was some kind of possibility of escapism as you're not able to ignore the war, it surrounds you, but for at least for uh, one hour and a half, you're able to you know, make sure you, you're enjoying your favorite music, you, you can make sure that you, know, you can touch something uh, of a pre-war concept. Um, talking about bombings and, and, and hardships we have faced, I've uh, brought you know, some small souvenir. Uh, this is the part of a Shahed drone which fell uh, on the roof of our club. It was shot down by our uh, air defense, and like, I found a couple of parts like this on the rooftop of our, of our club. And you can imagine if something would go wrong just a bit off, um, probably in, I won't be sitting here today. So it's uh, you know, this wartime souvenir. Um, well, uh, we have managed to go through this, uh, you know, toughest of times because almost all of the shows were in danger of sudden interruption by electricity shortcuts, by complete darkness, and it happened on numerous of occasions. Uh, there were electro band um, which was performing, then the power shut off, and they continued playing and acoustics. Um, you know, candle lights were our common friends. A lot of shows were interrupted by air alert sirens. So, so sustaining of music was not just a goal, it was a part of life. And same as I've said before, we were very sure that we need to do that and we never imagined when that we need uh, to stop. And uh, well, the best way, actually, to ensure sustainability of um, Ukrainian music, of Ukrainian jazz culture, is to support the Ukrainian cause. As, uh, as Olga has previously said, we're here just because, and thankfully uh, to our glorious army and defenders of Ukraine, because uh, in any other case, we won't be sitting here, and uh, it is quite likely that the whole European culture would be in a grave danger. Um, so, in a way, this challenge of, uh, you know, existent uh, crisis of challenge of shortage of electricity, of per performance under, um, you know, there's no hitting, uh, it, makes us, it made us stronger and uh, we became, you know, even more confident in, uh, in our actions, in a way. Because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, so, even during these difficult times, we managed to um, cooperate with international governmental and non-governmental organizations. On this picture, uh, you can see uh, basically all of the best jazz uh, musicians who were in Kyiv in May 2022. Uh, for many of them, it was the first show since the start of the war, the first performance. Uh, it happened, thankfully, to 
our friends from Japan. The name of the event was Regatta Japan for the support of our jazz music and especially thanks go to Igor Zakos who made this uh, possible. Uh, we have been very active with authentic music, the own music of our Ukrainian uh, jazz musicians even before the war, but we have continued doing that during the war, making it our priority, so they are able to perform, uh, you know, their fresh and own music at on stage. And uh, more than 20 albums were presented uh, during the war time in our club. You can see uh, on the board, you can see most of the names, uh, the people present there. Uh, well. And you can see again on the picture to the right um, that scandals uh, in our club during the power uh, electricity shortcut. So um, that's how we lived. Uh, and uh, another important part that during the toughest of times we have received a um, hand of help from the Just Foundation of America, uh, which made possible for our club to look into the future with a bit bigger share of optimism uh, and sure that we are able to host the shows during the you know the time of absolute darkness and uh, uncertainty and uh, you know special thanks will go to Wendy Oxenhorn and Joseph Petricelli from the Jazz Foundation of America uh, with their support, it became possible for us to buy a um, electricity generator, which ensured that we are able to supply our club with, you know, with necessities. Uh, the musicians, it, it made possible a lot of musicians to stay in Kiev uh, and not to leave the country, they were, uh, because uh, the May Day Art Foundation, which was uh, ensuring that they get paid well for their performances, uh, it made possible for them to stay at uh, their home country, at their hometown. Uh, it wasn't the first and only um, cooperation. Another one um, was the Swedish Week with the help of uh, Stockholm Jazz Festival. And uh, again, a special thanks go to the Ukrainian Institute and Mariana who made it possible. Uh, so this cooperation is one of the key factors of sustaining jazz culture in Ukraine, just music in Ukraine, because through all of these corporations, through these corporations, we're able to um, ensure that our music lives, expands, and becomes a part of the European family, of you know, European musical family. Uh, well, uh, to end with, uh, I want to just remind that we are open to any uh, communication, we're open to any partnerships. Um, where I'm really glad to be here, and I'm, I really want to see you all in Kiev at our venue uh, when we finally win the war. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dima. Thank you all for your informations, for your testimonies, and for your for what you are doing, actually, because it's incredible. It's just unbelievable that you are managed to, to do such a great work, such a fantastic project. If you have uh, some questions, that's a few short time for a few minutes for questions, please. Yes, Sonia, please. Thank you, Sonja Greiner from the European Choral Association. So I come from the amateur world, um, and we have seen Ukrainian choirs traveling abroad and winning competitions lately a lot. And we've also tried to help some Ukrainian choirs, but we had a discussion in our board recently about can we go into Ukraine with an activity? And you're all inviting us, but my board said, no, we can't because we can't take the responsibility of sending people into the war. And I know this may sound tough because we are kind of accepting that you are living in the war, but is, what is your point of view on this or your feeling if you would welcome foreigners in your country and would know that there is the risk of the foreigners being hurt while they are visiting your venues or your events? 
I can just just briefly jump on that because we were talking about that with Mariana, but actually, yeah, it may sound like a crazy idea that we are inviting all the people to Ukraine, but uh, foreign um, artists are playing concerts in Ukraine already. For instance, there is this um, singer songwriter Rome from Luxembourg. He played already like Kiev, Lviv. He's like doing a vinyl devoted to Ukraine. He's travel. He was traveling a couple of times already. Or uh, this UK band Tiger Lilies. They have uh, announced the concert in July in Kiev. Uh, they will come also to play. Help me with the uh, jazz musicians who are doing a great job in Lviv. So it is happening. Yeah, of course. Uh, I will. I will join you as well because uh, actually last December I had a brilliant story with a Belgian pianist, uh, Ivan Padoir, and he told me, you know, I got the foundation from my government. Uh, I have a travel grant, and I totally want to come to Ukraine to support your people and to play for free. Can you help me on that? And I immediately thought of uh, festivals that were taking place, yes, in December, yes, with electricity shortages, but we still had them. And in Lviv, uh, Just Best Festivals, uh, Just Best Festival was um, organizing a concert series, and he was part of uh, the festival together with um, Jazz Forum Talents Band uh, from Warsaw. And uh, they performed perfectly. Uh, the audience was more than happy. I will tell you more. People were standing literally on the stairs. It was really overfull. Uh, and further on, he went to Rivne, uh, which is also on the border with Poland, and then to Uman, which is in the central Ukraine, a little bit to the south. Uh, from Kiev, so it was a real tour. He was totally fascinated about that, and uh, he gave also some interviews to uh, Belgian uh, media and talked about that. And you know what? He wrote me like last week ago uh, and told me, you know, I want to come again. So I will be in Poland, and then I will definitely come to Ukraine. So please help me. And this year, uh, I believe we will do a collaboration with Ukrainian artists uh, together with him. So it's all possible. Of course, uh, to all that, I would like to add that you see in the media first news uh, from the front line. I totally understand that you are scared because you don't see the general um, picture. Like that you don't have the general vision how we live, how our life, a, a, a daily routine looks like. But uh, when we are talking on the, some green tours or generally on the concert tours in Ukraine, it's of course about the safe places, about the, those cities who are situated on the border with um, Poland, with other countries, or who have uh, underground concert halls. So you definitely will be safe. So please don't don't think about that. Uh, and we will uh, provide you with any other needed information. So you, are, you will be more than welcome to come. And of course, uh, our audience uh, is now really starving for new music from music from abroad. Because to be frank, I have now deja vu. Well, I, I haven't lived in that time, but I believe it was the same during the Cold War. So we would like to avoid it definitely. So please come. <laughs> I am Harald Huber from Austrian Music Council from Vienna. Uh, I have a short question to Olga Beckenstein. There is mentioned uh, on the screen an MI Jazz Festival. Did you talk about th this? Uh, it's uh, the festival that I founded in uh, 2016. Uh, uh, and it's a festival of uh, black American and improvised music. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, uh, we had like four normal editions, then we had one online edition during the COVID, and then we had collaboration with uh, San Jose Jazz Festival, which part of the uh, festival's history. Um, and uh, why is the question mark? Uh, what, uh, 
with the question exactly <laughs> no it uh, we we can see it on this on the screen this yeah. mi jazz festival and i want to to ask uh, what is this yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, it's basically a festival that i founded and um, it, it's a, it's not um, it's not an institution so it's a project organized by uh, NGOs that I also founded, okay, project. Uh, so, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it's one of the many activities uh, by It Olga. was one of the main activities yeah. uh, before the full-scale invasion, uh, yeah. Okay, I think uh, the rest of the discussion we will, uh, we, oh, yeah, Stefan. Hello, I'm Stéphane Grosclot from France. My question is about music styles. We spoke about jazz mainly, and is there any difference in, for music in Ukraine and Ukrainian musicians in other music styles, or is it all the same for all musicians? Um, of, I mean, I would say that first of all, this panel represents not only jazz music because um, even though my festival that I founded had this word in the title, is with question mark, and uh, I work, for example, mostly with improvised music, with electronic music, with new music, and um, yeah. And um, uh, Alona represent more pop scene, indie scene, and of course we can talk about classical music and, and so on and so on, and folk music, and uh, um, I mean, Uni uniqueness of music in every culture probably is through folk music and through its development. And uh, yeah, we have uh, ne neo-folk music as well. <laughs> and by the way, uh, since here is most less understood, um, a lot of uh, representatives from the classical background, we have a like, great classical music, contemporary and uh, electroacoustic music, like um, Alice Glikevich, for example, who, would, uh, who does also festivals like Anvisi and who writes contemporary opera and uh, so on. Now, my question was about the situation for musicians, Ukrainian musicians. Is it the same whatever the music is or is it specific in popular music, in classical music? You mean if the situation is equally uh, the same for all yes. different kind of m m music? Well, I'll try to answer this part from my side because the pop music in Ukraine, same as pop music in any other country, is more represented and more sponsored uh, generally. It, it, it f uh, flourishes economically better than other uh, styles. And for example, if you talk about jazz, uh, uh, the jazz culture doesn't have this opportunity to, uh, you know, economically prevail without the support. Uh, so, all of the music, uh, all of the music in Ukraine has suffered significantly uh, since the start of the war. But obviously, uh, there are there are areas that require uh, more attention. And not only speaking about jazz, there are obviously, you know, uh, specific cases which require significant help and attention. Uh, from my side, I would like also to add that for all of the musicians uh, in Ukraine from different genres, it is definitely a very challenging time nowadays. Um, I would say rather for classical musicians, it is less uh, stressful because most of them are working um, for music academies like teaching uh, or doing some scientific work or working for philharmonics or other official state organizations. Of course, it's a big uh, issue for those who are independent artists because basically, uh, especially in the eastern and southern parts of Ukraine, they lost their jobs, they lost their constant income. And thus uh, also, uh, for example, Jazz Club 32 is one of those who created uh, the foundation for uh, musicians. Olga also created MHS Festival, created and also a foundation to support uh, our 
our musicians, those who lost their jobs, who lost their homes, and so on and so forth. And uh, basically what we now try to do is to accumulate their needs and also uh, transfer it abroad and to find partners to support them. I can, uh, would like to also to express my gratitude to all of uh, international partners for artistic residences who were provided for a big number of musicians. We are also in contact with artists at risk uh, organizations. Um, th there are a lot of other great um, partners like Swan in Sweden who um, I'm always um, in contact with Ragnar Bertling and he's so um, happy about what's happening because he told me, you know, we have these musicians in our residence but we are uh, getting so many profits because they are really uh, sharing with us their music and making new collaborations with Swedish musicians and they make new programs, new concerts, they organize for them uh, new opportunities. Uh, so that's why, uh, of course, uh, our main uh, message for you would be support our musicians of any genres, uh, invite them for your uh, programs of the festivals for your concert venues include them to their um, to your any other initiatives to the residences especially to the collaboration uh, projects uh, they will be more than happy and we will be more than happy to share your Im information among them as well and thank you uh, i want to br uh, briefly add that um who also in very, very bad position from the in industry. It's not only musicians, but also professionals in the industry. Because while there is a lot of residences for artists, there is not that many residences for curators, for managers, and so on. So this is another part of this conversation that I think that should be happening. Just like a small summary, because our topic was the sustainability of music, and all of us have presented his or her version of how the sustainability should go and what is it actually, but for me, like just like a small conclusion, sustainability is actions. Because, for example, we have spoken so much about the problems of the, all of the musical spheres in Ukraine, how it has suffered, how the opera houses were bombed, you know, musicians have lost their homes, their lives, and, uh, well, for example, we have seen this uh, beautiful UN uh, chart with colorful boxes, but what was the UN response to the biggest ecocide of the last decades? Uh, well, a post about, uh, you know, what, hate, of speech hate, or something like this. So we need actions, and these actions might come in any form, in support donations, in collaborations, but, uh, you know, it would be unavailable for the whole of Ukraine, not only its musical sphere. Thank you very much. I think we are out of the time. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you, our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Just some housekeeping. Thank you so much. So all the speakers, we are very grateful, will be here, I think, for most of the forum. So they will stay on. So you will have a lot of opportunities to talk to them. Take it seriously. It's actions which will contribute to the sustainability. So it's really the invitation to all of you to get to them, to contact them. They are here not only for the coffee break that will follow now, which we will make shorter, only 15 minutes. <laughs> So, but like I said, you know, they will be here and it's, uh, you can digest, you can have a thought, you can continue. I'm very sure we will be able to circulate their contacts. So it's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity for you to get in touch. And I'm very sorry also about the hiccup with the PDF, with your presentation. We will also make that available afterwards to everyone. Sorry about that. So now, for the very last part, we have the coffee break upstairs for 15 minutes, and then we will have the two project exchange sessions. One will take place upstairs in the coffee break area, and one just 
next door in the lecture hall. So enjoy coffee and see you in 15 minutes. Thank you.